like I said, I work in um, event and conference services, and so we're actually just down the hall here on the right, so right across from the Student Affairs Office and right next to Student Life. So um, when you need me, that's where I am. So, um, but also, I always suggest that people set up, bless you, um, that people set up appointments with me, bless you. <laughs> um, no, you're fine. Um, just because, um, as, as I'm going to tell you about, I set up these event planning meetings with student organizations, and so I do them a lot, and I just want to make sure that when you need me and you come to see me, that you know I'm available to you and I can dedicate um, an hour to you and your group. All right, so let's get started. Um, so in today's workshop, you all are going to learn um, how to reserve space for your events, and then um, all of the details and kind of what's involved when you're planning a large-scale event on campus. And so when we say large-scale event, that means at least um, 75 people are attending your event, and we go up to 450, okay? So um, that can range in a variety of different spaces on campus. Um, you know, as small as the game room, the sports zone, um, UC 310, UC 312, and then go all the way up to, um, to the UC ballroom. Okay, um, so I just made um, a fun little list here of things that are really helpful in, um, in creating a successful event on campus. Um, uh, you know, the first thing, it might sound kind of obvious, but just knowing what it is that your group wants to do. Um, making sure that everybody in your group is on board and that this is, um, you know, something that follows with the mission of your student organization um, and something, you know, that's kind of on your list of things to do as an org for the upcoming year. So just knowing what you want to do, knowing what your event is going to look like before you come to me really helps out a lot. Uh, because I'm going to ask you lots of questions, and I'm going to ask you to like make decisions on the spot. So if you've thought about these things ahead of time, that then um, our time together is going to be most beneficial for you. Um, of course, being organized throughout the whole process. Um, something I'm going to share with you later, but over the summer, I actually created a checklist for student orgs of um, papers that you have to fill out, and when things are due, and I give your event specifically, certain deadlines, so making sure that you follow all of those. Um, of course, the R25 space reservation request. Um, this, you know, causes some anxiety for people. Um, so, um, so I'll talk a little bit about how to, to make a good request through R25. Of course, you know, that's the, um, one of the most important things is making sure that you have the space uh, for your event and that you get that reserved. Um, of course, meeting all deadlines and the checklist, like I said, is going to help you out with that. Of course, following all rules and regulations to make sure that you're doing everything, um, you know, in a manner that you're allowed to do it on campus. Um, and then, of course, having the funds. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about, you know, what's free and when, you, when your organization starts spending money, how, um, you know, what kinds of um, numbers you're working with here. And then um, all student organizations have a carryover account and an SGA account. So whether you all are deciding to fundraise and spend money um, for this event out of your carryover or if you decide to go to the SGA finance board. Um, so those are the two ways um, that people, um, you know, that they use funds and are able to pay for their event. And of course, um, if you decide to go to the SGA finance board, being very um, organized and detail-oriented when you go to them, and really making a case for your event and why it should happen. Okay, so like I said, our office um, is located here uh, down the hall, just about halfway, and so we're here to help you guys and um, to help you with reservations on campus. Um, we do all of the reservations when they're not um, for academic classes. The registrar's office does those. Um, so we, you know, help out with everything else. Um, we're also here for event planning consultations. So if you guys ever have questions about anything, um, I'm here to help you. And I'm supposed to be like your one-stop shop. So um, we're going to, you know, I work with um, all of our campus partners in helping to make sure that you kind of have all of the, your bases covered and all the logistics planned out um, so that your event can be as successful as possible. Um, and I also added to this presentation that um, just within the last few weeks, we started, um, we're now in charge of um, some of the spaces in the residence halls, like some of the multi-purpose rooms in the courtyards, and so you can reserve those through us now, um, because they're in the R25 system. 
Um, the only thing that's not in the system are um, basements. So those are supposed to be kept um, just for res life programming um, and not for the um, entire campus. Um, so just to let you know that those spaces are available to you now. Um, just to kind of give you an idea of um, people to know, so I work with all the student orgs um, in event planning. Whitney Smith, she works over in the RAC um, under athletics. And so I wanted to include that because I know there are some people in here that um, that work with club sports. And so, you know, the funding can be a little different for club sports just depending on the situation. And so I work closely with Whitney um, when club sports are trying to plan the events, and she's kind of the go-to person for club sports over there. Um, Dreama also works in our office. Um, she handles all of the outside clients. So in addition to student orgs and departments, um, we also have you know, people that are not affiliated with UMBC who are paying to come onto campus and to use our space. Um, and then Shawnee White is somebody that you guys are all going to work with because um, she works in Student Affairs Business Service Center, which is like literally right here um, through this wall. And um, so she works with all the funding to make sure that you guys have um, the funds that you need for your events. And then, um, so Dream and I are the only two full-time people in our office. Um, everything else that we do is done by our students. So we really, really appreciate them. Um, we'll, we'll, William and Marley, um, they're the two grad assistants in our office, so they're, um, they are amazing, and they do um, a lot of R25 requests, they're working with departments, and then Nicole and Hannah, they just started this summer, but they're equally as awesome. Um, so these are the names that you're going to see when you guys are requesting the space. Okay, um, so talking about requesting space, um, if you have a large-scale annual event, so it's something that's happening every year, your group, um, you know, fills up the space or is very close to reaching capacity, it's a successful event year after year, you're actually able to reserve the space one year in advance. So as soon as your program ends, let's say today, you know, if your event's tonight, um, you know, Monday morning, you can reserve the space for the fall semester. Um, so I think that's really important to note. Also, if you're an organization that's planning um, a large-scale event for the first time in the spring, let's say, this year, you can reserve that space starting this semester. So, you know, first day of classes, you could put your request in. Um, but then when it comes to meetings and smaller-scale things, um, immediately after Thanksgiving break is when we start processing the, re the request for the spring semester. So if you're putting in like a weekly meeting or something like that, um, you do that immediately following Thanksgiving break. And the same thing applies for the spring semester. You do that um, immediately following spring break um, for the fall semester. Um, so a lot of people wonder like why do I have a hard time requesting something for a few weeks out? Um, you know, when, when you know, your event might be this semester, and it's because people have re been reserving the space as far as two semesters out. So you just really have to plan ahead um, to make sure that you have the space, because don't forget, so you're competing with all the student organizations, you're competing with departments, you're competing with campus banner events like homecoming and admission and quad mania and all those events. Um, and then outside clients are also trying to get this space. So constantly planning ahead is going to make you guys more successful. Um, and then our student employees just asked that I put this on the PowerPoint presentation. Big sale spaces um, are hard to come by, especially on Mondays and Wednesdays. So, so think ahead um, for your fundraising activities. Um, also the UC ballroom, like a lot of people know, um, you know gets really full because that's um, our largest venue before you get over to the rack. And, um, and so student orgs, that's where a lot of people choose to be because that's the largest space available to you guys is, is the UC ballroom. Um, and then another thing I wanted to add is that um, a lot of groups don't realize that if you want to play a movie or a documentary in um, an open space here on campus, um, you know, so this is not in your residence hall room, but like in one of the meeting rooms or in a lecture hall, um, you have to get movie rights for that. And so Shawnee White um, can help you guys with that. So I just wanted um, to add that in there. So um, making this request in R25, um, that's the website. It's umbc.edu slash R25. Um, you go under My Requests. It's at the top left-hand corner. And then all student orgs use the same username and password. So they're all um, 
lowercase, and it's event for the username and then management for um, the password. And then you guys um, will be able to make the request. Also, it's important to know that when you go to put that request in, you have to have your chart field string number. So that's linked to your carryover account. So your treasurer should have that information, but if they don't, then you want to ask Shawnee White and Business Services. Um, so we have to make sure, even if you're not spending money for an event, we need to have your chart string um, linked to your event. And then this might sound silly, but a lot of people forget to put their contact information in that request. So we have to have your first name, your phone number, or sorry, your first and last name, um, your phone number, your email address, your um, chart field string number in every request. So, um, so that's important to note that, um, do you know, if you just do it right the first time, then it makes, you know, the process a little bit quicker for you. Um, all right, that's about it. Um, so just some R25 tips and tricks. Um, in one reservation that you put in, you can request multiple rooms and dates for the same event. So let's say that um, you want to put in a request for your weekly meeting. You can actually use... Um, let's see, you can use the weekly um, option, so it's just going to be one of the little options and then you select the circle there. Um, if it's the same day each week, um, so it's actually easier for us if you just put it all in one request and it'll, it'll be quicker for you guys too. Um, you use the ad hoc option if your meeting's not on the same day each week. And then um, uh, just a reminder to use your chart string numbers um, and all of your contact info. Um, and what I always tell everybody is if you get confused about R25 and don't know if you're doing it right or don't know if you've put in all the resources that you need, um, there's a little like note section at the bottom where you can just type all you want. I just tell people, put all the details in there. You know, that way there's no confusion. Because a lot of times our scheduling is done through email and so it's back and forth. And so the more questions there are about your event, kind of the less vague your request is, it might take you a little bit longer. And they do, um, they go through all of the requests um, in chronological order. So, you know, the sooner you put a request in, the sooner they're going to get to it. And then, um, just to remember, you know, after you put in your R25 request, we're going to look at space availability, funding. We're going to check to see if you have the funds yet. Um, sometimes we have to get space approval if it's not, you know, an area that we um, are, you know, over. And then, um, t so turnaround time is typically one to two business days, but during um, high, crazy peaks um, during the semester when things are really busy, you know, it might take three to four days. And you'll get an email confirmation for your event. Um, so student groups get the best rates for everything, and um, space is free on campus. You know, if you want the room as is, um, as the room typically comes, and all you need is the room, then, um, then space is free. The only time when there's an exception is when your event's in the game room, and that's because you know they charge for all the services to play table tennis or um, to play video games or whatever it might be. Um, so then when your event's in there, they're losing money. So, But it, it's not a lot of money. It's $50 an hour um, to use the game room. And then um, there's charges for everything else besides just the actual room. I'm talking about everything except for the game room. Okay, um, so like I said before, large-scale events are typically 75 to 450 people, but also if you, like, that's the, that's the area where you'll definitely be sent to me and you'll, you know, our schedulers will say you have to meet with Jackie to talk about your event, but if you ever, you know, have less than that and they tell you, they don't say anything about coming to meet with me, but you just want to come and meet with me, just to make sure, kind of, that you're thinking about all the logistics and all the planning involved, I am totally open to that too, um, and I welcome that. So when you guys ever have any questions, you just let me know, and I'm here to help you. Um, so then once the space is reserved, then you'll be sent to me, um, or you can just come to me if you want, um, to start the event planning process. So it might seem a little complicated, a little overwhelming, but I'm here to help you guys, and it's really not that bad. Um, so what we do is we sit down, and I schedule an hour meeting with you, um, and we go over the event planning form. And so it's really just all the details for your event. So I'm just, you know, writing down everything that you guys tell me. Um, and so those are just some of the things that we talk about. And so I'm going to go into all those um, in more detail here. So typically, um, I would say I meet with like one to four or five people in a student organization. 
you know, if, if you have like an event coordinator or somebody who's in charge of a specific event, um, a lot of times I just meet with that person, but then, you know, if you want to bring a few other people to the meeting, whatever you want to do, that's completely fine. Maybe, um, you know, maybe we're, your event's kind of like at the end of the spring semester and, and you're going to be graduating or you know that you're not going to have an executive board position next year and you want to bring like a younger member maybe who, who, um, who might be doing this in the future, that's always a great thing. This way, you know, they can learn ahead of time so they're kind of, they're not just like, whoa, what, what happened? Everyone who knew everything graduated. So, so it's good to help out those younger members and, and um, you know, keep going there. Um, so, so these are all the things that we'll talk about, and I'll go over them briefly now. Um, so we're going to talk about kind of the timeline of your event. So our staff, we're always going to have the room set up for you, so you're never going to have to worry about moving tables, chairs, or setting up your own AV, nothing like that. Um, our student staff are doing that for you. So that's what we call the operations setup. And then I'm going to talk to you about like what time does your group want access to the room, and then what time is your event actually going to start. Um, you know, maybe um, we have doors open at a certain time and tickets are going to go on sale. Typically people do that a half an hour before your event starts, but whenever you want to do that, um, it's fine. Then we have a doors close time, especially for events that are in the UC ballroom. Um, and then we talk about when is your program going to end and how long are you going to need to kind of clean everything up. Um, so Sunday through Thursday events have to end by 11.30 and uh, Friday and Saturday events can go as late as 1 a.m. I'd say um, typically like for the large scale events, um, we try to keep people around four hours um, is kind of the regular time. Sometimes, you know, there's lots of events that are shorter. Sometimes people, will, you know, go as many as five hours, but I'd say four hours is kind of um, a good amount for, you know, a good length for an event. Um, so like I said, we're going to talk about your room setup, how you want it to be. Um, so this, what you guys are in right now is called conference style. And um, so this is how the room typically comes. So let's say you want to reserve Commons 329, which is where you guys are right now. This is how the room is going to come. So, um, and that's another thing. You can't change the room um, once you get there. You know, if you wanted it to be differently, um, you know, we would have discussed this ahead of time um, because our staff has to be the ones moving everything. Um, so we, we talk about the setup, you know, if you want banquet, which is the round tables lecture, which is just chairs, classroom style, which is how 331 is set up with tables and then chairs on one side. Um, we talk about lighting packages, if you want basic lights or if you want dance party lights, um, or maybe you want production lighting, so it's, you know, like one, um, one spotlight on a performer and like pretty lights on the drapes in the UC ballroom. Um, whatever it might be, I kind of explain those to you and we figure out what the needs are of your event. We talk about sound packages and kind of what your needs are with that. If you have like single performers or if you have a band, um, you know, maybe you need like four microphones, maybe you need three wireless mics. We kind of talk about that and what all of your needs are there. Um, so the UC ballroom stage, how you normally see it is... Um, I'm trying to think, I think it's like 32 feet by 16 or 18, something like that. But you can actually get different kinds of stage setups too. So if you want a runway for the event, um, we can kind of talk about that and see how it's going to work um, with the room setup. And then um, other resources, of course, tables, chairs, pipe and drapes. So like the two big um, metal poles with a black drape. Um, you know, people use that for a variety of different reasons. Um, yeah, so that's kind of everything that we talk about as far as your setup. Um, of course, food options. So you can have no food at an event. You can use um, Glenmore, Chartwells, or um, there's a list of like five um, vendors that the university really likes working with. So I would say, so that list um, is kind of like the easiest um, food vendors to work with. Um, but then also you guys have that option to, to use whomever you want to use as long as they're willing to complete um, our preferred food vendor paperwork. Um, so just know that, um, that if you want to use someone else outside. So marketing. So you guys can totally do your own thing, create your own marketing materials, make your copies at Staples, whatever it is that you want to do. But we also have Common Vision. So that's the on-campus print design center. And so they're amazing and they're really great to work with. 
So they are um, almost the whole way down the hall. Last um, office on the right where all the seating is and before you go down the steps. So um, Common Vision, they create um, a lot of marketing uh, materials for campus. And so they have these marketing packages that they've created specifically for student groups. You know, they come with banner, poster, um, quarter cards, which are the little, you know, one-fourth of an eight-and-a-half by eleven piece of paper. Um, all of those kinds of things. Um, this semester, actually, are you guys familiar with the iNet videos that are on the TVs downstairs? So they used to be part of um, the marketing packages, but now they've kind of branched out and they're doing like something bigger and better now with iNet. So they have different packages. Um, and they're, you know, they're not trying to make them for every single event, but more as a branding tool um, for the student, for student organizations and, you know, to help you recruit new members and things like that. Um, so if you're interested in the INET, you know, go see the people um, at Common Vision. And also, if you guys ever decide um, that you're going to charge for admission for an event um, and you want to have tickets, um, well, so if you're charging, you have to have tickets. Um, but then um, some of the marketing packages also come with tickets. So we can kind of talk about that and talk about your options. And what's really cool is they have designers in Common Vision. Um, they're students and they really do awesome work. I, I go in there probably a few times a day um, asking them questions about how to do things. Um, but also, so they can design all of your things and you can like sit down, have a meeting with them, tell them what your vision is, the colors that you're looking for, things like that. Um, but then also you can have somebody in your student organization who also has those great skills um, and you guys can design your own thing. Um, now the only thing that I recommend is going on to the Common Vision website and they have all the details for um, like the size of, um, of your designs and you know um, all the measurements and the um, pixels and all of that stuff I don't understand. Um, they have all that stuff online, so this way, when your designer is creating all that stuff, they're doing it in the right format, so that Common Vision can place that on a quarter flyer or a banner or whatever it is. So you just have to make sure everything's done in the correct sizing. Um, but otherwise, you know, we print that stuff, and um, and then it's ready. You know, if you have a banner, it's going up, you know, on Market Street or whatever, it, wherever it may be, um, for your event. So people are seeing about it, know about it, and then they can come out to your event. Um, so I think that's about it for combination. Okay, um, so entertainment contracts. So um, so if you have if you if there's a student who's you know or like a student group who's performing at your event, I mean that is so easy. Um, you know that's great. That's always welcome. They certainly don't have to do any contracts. If you have a professor or a staff member who's coming to speak at your event or do magic or whatever it might be, that's also great. Um, now, when, when there's somebody who's not affiliated with UMBC who's coming to your event, so maybe they're the guest speaker, they're an MC, they are coming and doing a little salsa dance, whatever it might be, um, then you need to do a contract for them, so an entertainment contract. Um, so. Um, with those people, oh, also alums. A lot of people ask me, you know, I have somebody who just graduated last semester. Do they have to do a contract? Yes. And so we do zero dollar contracts all the time. So even when you're not paying people, as long as they're not affiliated with UMBC, we do a zero dollar contract. Yeah. And then um, anyone who's being paid needs an entertainment contract. So um, I'm going to explain to you guys what Basecamp is. But if you ever have a speaker or some sort of performer coming, um, just shoot me an email, I think is probably the easiest, and I'll send you the document that I need you to fill out. Um, the Student Life website is being updated, so as soon as that is, you know, all updated and great, um, there's going to be a link on there, so it's going to be a little bit easier, but right now we're just working with the Word document. Um, and so that Word document is due to me for each performer that you have coming to your event. Um, again, if they're not affiliated or if you're paying them, um, 30 days before your event. So again, just shoot me an email um, if you need that document, um, and hopefully, you know, relatively soon, every you know that's going to be online. Um, so you you can also not pay somebody who already works for the state of Maryland and somebody who's already already being paid. So like a staff member here, you know, I receive a paycheck from Maryland, so. Um, you know, I, I can't be paid for services. A student who's like an RA or who works in the game room, whatever it might be, um, you also cannot be paid. 
um, for your services. I already talked about it, that that form's due a month before. Um, so what happens is we just we have you fill out this document because we need a lot of details in order for the contract to be created. So you guys submit the document with all those details, including your performer's contact information, and then I create the contract, and then I'm going to send it to your performer, ask them to initial, to sign, possibly give me some more information that I need. They send it back to me, and then I have to send it to our legal counsel to get approved, and then they send it back to me, and that has to happen before your event. Yep. Um, so housekeeping. So housekeeping is required whenever there's food being served at your event. Um, it, and this is except for when your event's in the commons because housekeeping's here 24-7. Or if you have more than 100 people at your event um, and if it's outside of their regular staff hours. So if you have a nighttime event, there's a good chance that it's um, outside of their hours. And then there's always two people that you're paying um, to be there and to work your event. and. Um, those people are going to be, you know, making sure that the bathrooms are clean. If there's a spill, they're going to go and clean it up so we can make sure your members are safe. Um, if there's trash on the tables, they'll be taking the trash away, um, emptying the trash um, bags and getting rid of that stuff. And so they're very helpful. And um, so we just make sure everything's clean, the environment's safe. Um, and, and really so that way, um, once your event's done, we can kind of change the room over quickly so that the next people can come in and they can have, you know, the same clean space um, that you've had. And then there's student marshals. So these are student employees that work um, for the UMBC police. And so anytime that there's at least 75 people at your event, there's probably going to be a student marshal required. And especially if you have, um, if you're inviting guests um, from the public, you know, from people that are not UMBC students, then there's um, definitely a need for security. And then if your event um, goes after 11 p.m., then we have to have a police officer there. So it's just to make sure you know everything's safe. Um, some of the large-scale events, they are doing wanding and making people empty their pockets, things like that, just to make sure that we have a safe and fun environment. Um, so requesting money from SGA, of course, I'm sure many of you know that they have the allocation request form. Um, so I kind of talked about like, when you have to go to the SGA meetings. Um, their deadlines are Wednesdays at noon, and then they will see the group the following Tuesday. So let's say you, know, you turn in all of your paperwork and everything for this upcoming Wednesday, then you'll receive an email from them saying, you know, please come to our finance board meeting at so-and-so time, and that will be the following Tuesday. Um, so it's important to note that you have to follow all of the SGA deadlines when you're requesting for money, but so that means that you have to meet with me even before that. So this way we can figure out all your pricing and everything. Um, and then funding has to be approved at least 10 business days out from your event um, with Shawnee. Um, just some tips that I've realized um, through working with a lot of student organizations. Um, so SGA actually put something on that allocation request form that says, um, it says that you have to get it stamped by our office. Um, to prove that you have the space reserved. Because what they realized in past semesters is they were giving people money for events and they didn't even have the space. So we didn't even know if the event was happening. So um, the stamp, all it says is that you have space reserved for the event. And um, I'm not the only one that can, can stamp it. Anyone in my office can. So you just show up. Um, we just we look at R25 to make sure you have the space and then we'll stamp it for you. This way um, there's no delay um, with your SGA um, allocation request. Um, also, a lot of people don't realize that the SGA allocation request is double-sided, so you have to flip it over, read new paragraphs, and then you have to initial. Um, that's another thing I hear a lot about student groups um, kind of making that mistake, and then they have to you know, quickly do it for the next finance board meeting. Also, just to, to remember that the finance board, they want to see quotes for everything, so um, you know, just please make sure that you have that prepared ahead of time, or that can delay your process. And when you go to the finance board meetings, you really have to talk um, very highly about your event and say, you know, how it's going to impact the UOBC community. They want to know that they're, um, you know, giving out the funds and that it's going to, um, you know, greatly um, reach all, like as many students as possible. So they want your event to be open um, to people. Do you ask questions? How do you estimate turnout? I notice a lot of things are based on numbers. If you're, you're just right. inviting. Yeah. What'd you say? If you're just inviting yeah. people, right. how do you know? So I would say that a lot of people do it based on, you know, a lot of the groups I work with have annual events. 
so they know that maybe if we shot for 300 last year and it filled out or it filled up and then they had to turn away people they say okay can we please raise that to 325 or 350 um, so and also I guess you know people have Facebook groups or whatever it might be and so kind of seeing um, kind of who's coming and um, or I hear some groups like I have somebody um, coming up in a few weeks that's going to be in Skylight and so they know that professors are you know making it required that their classes attend or so people just yeah you really just have to kind of project a number and sometimes it's just based on um, the room set up and what capacity looks like for that event and you know if you think it's going to be really awesome then we kind of shoot for capacity but if it's maybe a first time event we're going to be a little bit more realistic and maybe you know just a hundred people or whatever maybe. Thank you. Yep, great question. Um, okay, so safe meeting. So if you have like a large scale event that's kind of incorporating all these logistics I appreciate you guys, your patience. That's wrong, but we're still a little over, but I swear I'm going to end soon. Um, so then we have a safe meeting. So that stands for a safe and fun event. And um, so we do this one month before your event, and it's just to make sure that we have all the details figured out. So I'm there, somebody from technical services, someone from the police, Common Vision, um, somebody, my student manager for ticketing staff is there, um, and then of course the student org. So we're just going over all the details on your event planning form to make sure everything's great, 